Well, I know that we've got a whole lot clearer of a picture now when we talk about this mock draft of what the Chiefs mm-hmm. are potentially going to do. So let's go ahead and get into the mock draft here. This is Mock Draft 6.0 brought to you by the NFL Mock Draft Database. I mean, Denny out here every day grinding, updating this database. I think now up over 750 mock drafts now in the database. The simulator just keeps getting better and better now with player, you know, little blurbs from the uh, NFL Drafts Bible on Sports Illustrated. You can see those on there. Comp picks have now in been included into the simulator which just makes this a whole lot better now we should remind you this draft order is not the final draft order there's still other things to be added in but this is just a just an, a guess of, of an educated guess of what this draft order will look like we've had a whole lot of fun with the nfl mock draft database they've been really good to us denny over there i mean i think that he has one of the best products in the game right now and he's been doing a really great job and it's all for free as well so make sure you guys go support him i think he's got a patreon link on there and and, and if you guys should go and, and support him i don't think it's very much at all maybe one dollar a month yeah, guys, if you're interested in basically robbing Denny, just go ahead and go on the website and mm-hmm. check it out. I mean, you're you're holding the guy at gunpoint, basically. I mean, it is ridiculous. That dude puts in so much work, and he's really personable. He's a nice guy. He's really intelligent. Um, I believe Denny's actually a Bears fan, so I kind of feel mm-hmm. bad for him that they went and got um, Andy Dalton. But otherwise, right. Denny's a pretty good dude and seems to know exactly what he's doing. So maybe we can convince him to – follow the chiefs a little more hey maybe you know matt Nagy, they got that little bit of pipeline right there so yeah. it, it could be possible we do have a better idea of what the chiefs could do at pick number 31 so let's go ahead and get into it obviously you know the settings we're going to be using uh we're, we've thrown around probably changing up the settings maybe later on uh once we get kind of bored i guess you could say once we get into <laughs> the same routine of, of you know okay this is what the chiefs are going to kind of do but this week we've got all new information all new things that we can go off of so we're just going to do our regular you know pre-draft seven rounds normal normal realistic strict settings so i'm going to go ahead and start our simulation here all right so at 31 now jordan i I, i'm curious what you think you still think it's tackle because i still think it's tackle i still think it could be tackle obviously i'm probably going to say the same thing every time we do a mock if rashad bateman's there at 31 i don't care who else (laughs) is there you take him but it's probably tackle. And then if not tackle, then I think edge would be the place I go, depending on what the chiefs do in free agency. I was kind of operating under the assumption they'd get like a higher tier guy or something similar. Now with Charlton back, I don't know exactly what their whole plan is going to be there. I was telling you earlier, I ran a mock here and uh, Kyle, uh, Pitts. I get him and Kyle mm-hmm. Trask mixed up sometimes, <laughs> uh, but Kyle Pitts fell down to the Chiefs, and I felt like that was something that okay, you gotta gotta take him because I think he's slated at number seven on the mock uh-huh. draft consensus big board. Uh, if he falls all the way down there, I think that is kind of a no brainer. But another piece that just interestingly fell to the Chiefs as I look at the big board now, Micah Parsons, who's the twelfth mm. overall rated. Uh, linebacker oh, just player in general he's a very high rated linebacker just fell to the chiefs uh zavin collins tevin jenkins travis etienne wyatt davis those are your top five right now on the all around board jason owe just went uh at, to buffalo right before the chiefs pick Jalen mayfield at 29 to the packers rondell moore at 28 to the saints trevon morig at 27 to the ravens aziz ojalari at 26 to the browns samuel cosme at 25 to the Jags, Jalen Phillips at 23 to the Jets. I think that's probably all of the rooting interest right now for the Chiefs. Rashad Bateman at 18 to the Dolphins. J.C. Horn to the Washington football team at 19. Pitts went 15 to the Patriots. Like the like the Patriots need another tight end. Um, <laughs> but uh, what do you think in here, Jordan? I know that I, I've seen this idea thrown around a lot, especially with the Chiefs having a vacancy at center. Why not go center if, you know, if Creed Humphrey's still here, which he is, Creed Humphrey's still there. I wouldn't hate going Creed Humphrey's at number 31 overall, having him start and then having Tooney right next to him. I think it would really help him. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I think that you can go one of three ways. And Micah Parsons is one hell of a football player, but man, I'm just not there. Like A, that's completely unrealistic. And I guess we are going based off what our board says, but that's not going to happen. Then B, I'm between Creed Humphrey and Tevin Jenkins. That's mm-hmm. that's the two for me, especially since a guy like Phillips, who I think is one of the top three edge prospects in this year's draft, he's already off the board. So 
man, you can go with Humphrey and slide him in at center. And then you have a guy like Nick Allegretti could be your sixth offensive lineman or whatever and be your backup interior guy. You have a starting left guard, center, right guard, right tackle, which that's a pretty good spot to be in. Or you can go Tevin Jenkins, but then you would have to move Niang over to left tackle, which I don't love. You would have to move Jenkins over to left tackle, which I definitely don't love. They're both young. So I'm leaning Humphrey here. I'm with you. Yeah, I think Humphrey's a good pick here, especially since he had a killer pro day. Um, mm-hmm. I know I, I seem like I talk about this on literally every podcast that I've been on uh, <laughs> since his pro day is how good of a pro day Creed Humphrey had. I was really impressed. And I was on the Landon Dickerson better than Creed Humphrey train. And I, I was on the train of, I don't know why, you know, Creed Humphrey is that much rated that much higher than Landon Dickerson. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the dude's an athlete and the best ability is availability. Now, don't get me wrong. I still love Landon Dickerson and his ability, but Creed Humphrey really impressed me in his pro day. And I think that's probably the way to go, because if you think about it, then uh, you're going to get LDT back. We'll see. So that's your right guard, uh, Niang, at, at Niang at right tackle. Then you have to fill left tackle. Hopefully, I'm really thinking that the Chiefs are going to find another veteran presence. Uh, to play that left tackle because I don't see them starting two rookies at, at the tackle position. I just don't think that that's very likely. So I think Creed Humphrey is a good place to go kind of for a, a anchor for years to come because I think that's what he can't be. Yeah, I'm with you. And even if he's not the anchor because the Chiefs have had some pretty damn good centers that they've let walk. But still, uh-huh. for the next four years you're getting, or even five if you ex, uh, exercise that fifth-year option as yeah. a first-round pick, you're getting an affordable center who's going to be a smart football player. He's a better athlete than even I gave him credit for. Um, he tweeted out thoughts and prayers to everybody who called him an average athlete, which mm-hmm. I was one of those people. I pulled the the blurb for my draft report, but man, I love him. He's a really smart player. He's fundamentally sound. So I say we lock it in. Let's do it. Creed Humphrey at number 31 overall. I like the pick kind of for the long-term value as well. I think that having a guy that you can guarantee for at least four years uh, is, is going to be something very crucial to anchor in. And I think that with, with the signing of Tony, that makes it even better. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, having that veteran presence on really either side, because LDT, right. even if he doesn't come all the way back to form, he's a veteran presence and he knows what to do. So I don't think you could ask for a much better situation. And now we're looking at pick number 63 here. I'll go to the all around board here. You see Richie Grant, Javon Holland, Andre Cisco, Jackson Carmen, Kyle Trask. I don't even know why I said Kyle Trask. He's a quarterback, so we're not <laughs> going to think about taking him. So your top four are Richie Grant, Javon Holland, Andre Cisco, Jackson Carmen. Who do you like here, Jordan, kind of position-wise? I know those guys might not jump out to you right now, but kind of what are your thoughts here at 63 now? I'm thinking let's take a look at the edge board just to see what everything is, is looking at. Because I think if you're looking for anything close, like if a Patrick Jones is still there, then that's something you would do. Yeah, so if we look at who went, Patrick Jones just went at 58 to the Ravens, mm-hmm. Ronnie Perkins at 60 to the Saints. Uh, Jabril Cox went at 57. I know he's a linebacker, but to the Rams, Carlos Basham to the Seahawks at 56. Joe Tryon at 53 to the Titans. Man, it really seems like if, if the Chiefs want to get on tier two of these edge rushers, they're going to have to either trade back or trade up. I think they're going to have to trade up from, I don't really think they're going to trade back from their 31 spot, which they could. Um, It wouldn't shock me. You just have to have two to tango, but maybe trading up from that number two spot up to, up to somewhere in this, you know, 50 ish range, 50 to 55. And you can get a Joe try on a, a guy like that, a Carlos Basham or Patrick Jones in that range. I think that's what they're probably going to have to do to get, to get a guy like that at the edge position. Yeah. I'm with you. And really the there's data. I don't know the exact, specifics off the top of my head but after the first round after that top 50 like that the likelihood of you getting a productive like all pro or pro bowl or 10 plus sack whatever the parameters are edge rusher they're not great like those guys have a specific crop of talent at the top of the draft this year's class is not fantastic so I think after the Chiefs pick at 31 it's going to be really difficult for them to do something like that but when we look at the edge board, Quincy Roche is still there. Ham Club Rashid Jr., Rashad Weaver, um, the kid from Vanderbilt that I don't really want to pronounce his name, Deo Odingingbo. I think we struggled uh-huh. with this last week. Um, Shaka Tony, uh, they're all there. 
Um, maybe you want to take a look at linebacker, maybe any other position that you want to look at here? Let's go wide out real quick and then Ooh, we can go back yes. to linebacker. I do think that sometimes we forget about wide out, especially last week when we had Landon Dickerson fall to us at that spot. Uh, yeah. We kind of got a little tunnel vision right there, but I'm honor St. Brown is there. Tylen Wallace, two guys that both you and I like Seth Williams, who you had a scout on yesterday about mm -hmm. uh, you had him more as a third round grade. So two, two out. Well, Diami Brown, I, uh, do you, do you like that crop of receivers right here at 63? I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I think if Amonra is there, the Chiefs should pull the trigger. So assuming I would probably go Amonra, but also let's take a look at the tackle board. I think I want to go there just for the heck of it. Mm, okay. You have Jackson Carmen is the highest rated tackle mm. from Clemson. Walker Little at 84. Spencer Brown, 99. Brady Christensen at 105. Okay. Those are their consensus big board ratings. Um, I like Amonra in this position because I think yeah. you could probably wait out until round three. James Hudson mm -hmm. is a guy I really like too. Um, so if, if Brady Christensen's out there in round three, if Spencer Brown's out there in round three, uh, James Hudson, uh, I don't want to say you settle for him because I still think any team who gets James Hudson is going to be lucky to get James Hudson, if that makes sense. But I think that there are, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, there's some pretty solid round three talent right there in tackles. But when it comes to wide receiver, Tylen Wallace, Monitor, St. Brown, I think those two guys are, are about as good as it gets. Yeah, let's go ahead and just do Amonra, and then we'll see what the board has in round three. I'm good with that. Amonra St. Brown. I think this is the second time we've selected him in that second position right there at 63. I think it fits him well. I think that he's a good receiver, got, got a good body, and could really be a, a very good impact player for the Chiefs. Yeah, absolutely. He's one heck of a player. I think that the ceiling isn't quite as high as some other guys, but I think his ability to translate his talent day one – like those second round, third round guys, you have Diami Brown and Amonra probably at the top. You have a Sage Surratt, you have a Seth Williams, guys like that, where you know they're going to translate something to the NFL, but you just don't know. I guess you're exercising damage control with their weaknesses. Yeah. Maybe in a guy like Amonra doesn't really have many of them. So when we look at the pick number 95, Spencer Brown, Brady Christensen, James Hudson, all there. Um, so you really have the pick of the crop right here, whoever you like better at tackle. I do think tackle is an interesting position to go out mid round right here mm -hmm. because the chiefs are going to need depth on the offensive line. That's, that's a fact they can sign all these starters, but <laughs> they had so many people leave because of free agency and mm -hmm. their depth right now in their futures contract. I don't love, I think signing some younger guys to be here for the long term is, is going to be important. Yeah, I'm with you. So I think depending on what the rest of the board has that we go with Christensen, he's my preference out of those yeah. guys. I know you really like Brady Christensen and I like him too. I, I know that you get, we're on with the guys up in Provo and they said, I guess that's over in Provo, not really up, but uh, they said that they thought he could play guard too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, it's kind of like a Tevin Jenkins thing where you aren't sure if he can work on yeah. an island. You want him more in a phone booth, which I think those guys have earned the benefit of the doubt. So you at least try it out. But even if it doesn't work, he would be a better guard probably than a tackle. So that's okay. Yeah. And especially too, if he comes in and he battles out for that right tackle spot for Lucas Niang, will it, or barring that they sign somebody at the left tackle, I should say, mm -hmm. uh, they battle out for, he doesn't get it. Maybe he can slide over to the right guard position. Maybe if, if LDT is not up to the shape that we expect him to be, maybe that could be a, a very solid position for him to be in. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's pencil in Christensen, but let's take a look at the rest of the board real quick. Yeah. I, I want to look at the tight end here real quick because okay. Hunter Long is there. Trey McKinney, uh, from Georgia, Tommy Tremble, who is at now 176. I believe he was in the 200s once we started looking yeah. at him. So he's kind of shot up a little bit. But we could probably wait on, on uh, Tremble because, fun fact, the Chiefs have picked 176 in the, in the simulation. So mm -hmm. if everything is chalk from here on out, you're going to get Tommy Tremble there. So is there any other position that you want to look at? Let's take a look at edge, then we can skip over to maybe safety corner linebacker. I just want to take a, a broad look right now. Perfect. Uh, Ham Claire Rashid Jr. still there from Morgan State. Rashad okay. Weaver also still there. And you still have Shaka Tony and the kid from Vanderbilt, whose name I'm not going to pronounce anymore because I've, I've <laughs> barred myself from trying to pronounce it because I don't want to embarrass myself again. Those are your guys right there at linebacker. Jamin Davis is there who I, I, I who's shooting out of a lot of draft boards. Cameron McGrone's mm -hmm. there. Pete Werner, a guy who's at 137, and the Chiefs do have that 137 pick. So maybe okay. he could be there in the fourth round as well. 
when you look at cornerback, you have Shakira Brown, Israel Mukamu. Wow, that was a tough one. Maybe I should have just said that one faster. <laughs> um, Kerry Vincent Jr. from LSU, Benjamin St. Justice from uh, Minnesota. At safety, Paris Ford, Adarius Washington, Richard LeCount, and Caden Stearns all there. Uh, Stearns from Texas. The count is from Georgia. Uh, Darius Washington from TCU. Obviously, Paris Ford from Pitt. We're big fans of Paris Ford. We took him at this position last oh, yeah. week. So I think that we wait for Pete Warner at 137. Mm-hmm. And if he's there, we take him. And where's Rashad Weaver on this mock? Do you think he'll be there at the next one? Ooh, Rashad Weaver's at 102. The Chiefs don't have another pick mm-hmm. until 137. So I'm I fine don't with that. really think so. I'm I'm fine with going maybe I think I gave him a third round grade. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, so Rashad Weaver there. Do you like him more than Brady Christensen at this point? Mm, man, that's considering that's a tough one, man. Yeah. That that's a really tough one because you need offensive line depth, but could Weaver develop into a average starting edge? I think it's possible i mean he just doesn't really have the athletic tools but he's a strong like my thing is weaver is a guy that could play right now possibly and like at the beginning of the pod i mentioned a guy who can set the edge on first and second down have a little bit of juice off the edge then concede to a guy like taco charlton on third down who just goes all out has the athleticism like that is a pretty interesting dynamic so i think you could get more out of him right now and he could be an NFL ready, almost starting caliber player. So I'm, I'm kind of leaning Rashad Weaver here. And there is more offensive tackles. I think in terms of depth that you can get, than there are edge mm-hmm. rushers that you can get. Um, I just looking at the tackle board right now. I mean, Dan Moore is still there who could be a good potential edge guy. Mm-hmm. Alaric Jackson, Adrian Ailey didn't have the best pro day. Uh, but I still think that there are guys there, Landon Young, another one from Kentucky who's who are late round guys, but I still think that can provide depth more likely than getting an edge rusher in these mid to late rounds that can provide depth, if that makes sense. I, I'm with you with Rashad Weaver. I'll go ahead and lock that one in. I like that pick at uh, one or at 95. He's project, listed at 102 on the big board. I can't remember uh, if we've picked him before. I believe that we have, but I don't know. I don't think it's been this late before. No, I think we took him. Man, originally, I remember when we first started kind of – not looking at guys, but ranking them. Mm-hmm. It was Weaver and Jones were like neck and neck. Like some people had Weaver ahead of Jones. And obviously I think Jones will be a much better NFL player, but that's not because Weaver's bad. It's just because Jones ceiling is significantly higher. And sometimes in the draft, like people say you, you sign for need and you draft for value or whatever. Right. There's a lot of truth in that. And I think that Rashad Weaver gives you a little bit of both. So I'm, perfect with him at 95 yeah i'm just looking back at our uh my little notes right here that i that i keep on these mock drafts and i think we rashad weaver was taken in our first mock draft and we did take him at 95 actually um so he hasn't moved a whole lot but i think that is the last time that we took him was was in as a 1.0 so we haven't talked about him in a while i don't know when Pitt's pro day is off the top of my head do you happen to know i'm not sure i wish Mm -hmm. i knew yeah um, I think it's one of the later ones, but yep, that's the last time that we had taken him was in 1.0. So that means we get Rashad Weaver returning back to the roughing the kicker mock draft. I'll keep those notes out so we can uh, re- reference back to those. Um, let me check here. I think you had a notification that I thought was interesting. Oh, yes. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is going to the Miami Dolphins. Um, one year mm. deal with the Dolphins. Um Nothing too groundbreaking, but I thought an interesting signing that I thought I would share that we get uh, a little live react to. Uh, But let's move on to 137 then. That was our live reaction to the Jacoby Brissett signing. Yeah, that was our live reaction. It's just, hmm, all right. Um, But yeah, that's that's all you need to know. Um, So 137, Jordan. Let's look at offensive tackle. Do you think that's where we start? Is Pete Warner still there? Oh, good question. Uh, Pete Warner is still there, and I think that that is the pick. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. All right, Pete Warner, 137, <laughs> right where he's slotted to go. Um, I like that we were on the same page right there. That makes this a lot easier. And I, I like him a lot. I think he's yeah. a guy who has experience at all three slots. Um, he 
fits that Sam role that the Chiefs are looking for. He's a strong guy who can stack and shed. You have to be able to do that in the Steve Spagnuolo defense. They have to have strong hands. You have to be willing to get your hands dirty. Willie Gay is not that guy. A guy like Chaz Surratt isn't that guy. Um, Damian Wilson was kind of that guy. He was willing to kind of get in there, work hard, play good run defense and stuff like that. So I think that Pete Werner is a, a perfect fit. I think I even gave him a third round grade. Fourth round, 137. That's really good value. Yeah, I was talking about that. I think I was talking to you about this, how I struggle with the numbers in the rounds. But what I really like about the mock draft database is it'll tell you the round right underneath it. Um, mm-hmm. So I can see, okay. So the Chiefs are at 145 right here, which is the last pick of round four. So I was poking around at the board while you were talking. Um, one of my guys, Tyree Gillespie, still on the board. Uh, he's projected at 144 as a safety. Uh, look at the edge board. Jordan Smith still there. Dalen Hayes still there. Um, at 159 last week is where we took Dalen Hayes. Look at the tight ends. Wow, you got the tight end board has been clean. You got <laughs> Kenny Yaboa from Mississippi, Nick Eubanks from Michigan, and Luke Farrell, tight end from Ohio State. Doesn't really look like uh, any tight ends that I'm l- looking for until probably Matt Bushman around pick 250. So I could see that being our seventh round pick. Jordan, do you have any thoughts on positional need right now? When we look at our selections, we've got interior offensive lineman, wide receiver, edge linebacker. We've done a really good job kind of painting a broad, broad stroke, if that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. And I think that Tyree might be the pick. He's a guy that I think could kind of fill that dirty Dan role where not the most gifted athletically gifted player, but he can play like a single high or when the play's in front of him, he can make smart decisions. And really, as that third safety, that's all you need to do. So Mizzou bias aside, because I don't really have one here, I think that he's a good pick. And then a guy like Matt Bushman or even Pro Wells, like in the literally the end of the draft, if they're still there, we can do that. So we'll just operate under the assumption that the Chiefs sign a tight end two or just are fine with rolling with whoever they want again for another year. I don't know if they have anybody. They chose not to tender Dion Yelder. I so think uh, Kaiser's Kaiser. a exclusive rights. So, I mean, they'll bring him back just because it won't cost them really anything to do it. Not going to cost them a dime. So, um, I was looking at the overall big board here. I didn't know if uh, Oso Digizua did anything for you. Josh and Matter Baby's right there. I know we're going to have a wide receiver. Mm. Um, Anthony Schwartz Ooh. is also still there. So, any thoughts is on Trill Williams? Guys? Trill Williams out of Syracuse, is he there? Oh, Trill Will. He's listed as a cornerback, isn't he? Yes, yes. he is. Trill Will is still there. Okay. I like Trill. I, I'd like to change my pick. I think that he can do all the stuff that Tyree can do, but also has that upside is crazy. Like, if he can somehow stick at corner, he reminds me of a guy who was, like, touted um, as an athletic guy who – was going to struggle in man coverage and couldn't flip his hips quickly enough. And then he got drafted in the fourth round and became a really good player. So um, not to compare the two, but I definitely like him at 145. Does he have the ability to play safety to him? I think of somebody else. He, he spent on third downs quite a bit of time at safety. So he is definitely gotcha. a guy that I think even if he fails as a corner, there's something there. I thought that he was listed as a defensive back when you did your, mm-hmm. or, or you listed him as a quarterback safety. Um, I couldn't remember who it was though. And we know that Steve Spagnuolo likes that versatility. So he will mm-hmm. probably be big on the chiefs, big board. So let's go ahead and draft Trill Will. Trill Williams, one of the best names in the drafts, in my opinion. I think it's a good pick for the future. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, like if you, try him out at corner and he's just not sticky enough, his hips are not fluid enough. Um, he has the long speed, I think, to be effective, and he has that size and physicality. He's not afraid to play good run defense. I think safety would also be a good spot for him. So we're looking at pick number 176 here for the Chiefs, and we've done a really good job, if I can say so myself, of drafting <laughs> at a lot of positions. Um, you don't usually see a lot of double ups uh, when it comes to the draft, uh, positional wise. So we'll, we'll try to stay away from that. But Creed Humphrey, Amon St. Brown, Rashad Weaver, Pete Werner, Trill Williams. I'm <laughs> thrilled with this draft right now. Interior offensive line, wide receiver, edge, linebacker, cornerback. What's the next kind of position that you want to address? Do you want to try to look at tackle again? Yeah, I think we circle back to tackle. Just A, to satisfy the people, and B, because there, there might be some good value there. 
Yeah. Adrian Ely is the best available tackle right now. Uh, like I said, didn't have the best pro day out there. I wasn't too impressed with him, but this is a guy you're going to pick in the fifth round, sixth round uh, type area. The Chiefs do have another pick at 182 coming up, just so just a hop, skip, and a jump down uh, the road here. So you look there. There's I'm not I'm not too enthralled by him. I know some people like Brendan Jameis just because of the local aspect, him being from Nebraska, and then you have Cole Van Lannan, I think from uh, Wisconsin who's projected at 225, uh, Jameis from 211 and from Nebraska at 208 for Adrian Ely. There's not a whole lot of tackle talent uh, there. I think Landon Young would probably be a good round seven. Larry Borum, kind of Mizzou bias there. I do like the guy. I do like Larry Borum. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of similarities between him and Yasir Durant, kind of as an undrafted guy, though. Um, but but we can I, – I don't know if you're really in love with, with who they got to tackle right now. I don't. I, I don't love Ely. I do like Van Landen a lot, but this would be a reach for him. I think he's be. probably more of a sixth round guy, if not maybe seventh. So, man, do we just go best player available here and kind of see who all is left? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Ted Gowan, he is a cornerback who we have already drafted from UCF. He's pretty solid. Uh, Kay Johnson, wide receiver from South Dakota State. Trey Brown from Oklahoma. Joshua Bledsoe, safety from Missouri. Uh, Rashad Wild Goose, the second cornerback from Wisconsin, that guy's got a good name. That is a good name. <laughs> um, man, maybe we should look at interior defensive line. How do you think about that? Um, yeah. Kyrie Tonga is there. I like Tonga mm. in this position. Maybe could be an interesting pick. Um, nobody else really sticks out to me, to be honest with you. Jared Goldwire from uh, Louisville is there. Malik Herring from Georgia. Taquan Graham from Texas. Hmm. So what no to Daryl Slatton, no uh, Bobby Brown the third. They're both off the board now. Both off the board. They went just a little bit ago. The Chiefs did have a big layoff from 145 to 175, 176. Yeah. Um, so Bobby Brown went at 163. Um, I swear I saw where – oh, I forgot who it was. Oh, Terrell Slayton at 166 to the Colts. Um, so both of those guys who I like, you just did a couple mocks on those guys. Yep. Um, are they're there? You did do mocks on me, you did scouts on them. Uh, <laughs> that's what those are called. But I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm, with, not, I'm fine with Tonga time. Okay. Uh, I'm fine with I, it. Yeah. I'm looking at else who else do Dalen Hayes. I mean, that's another edge 177. Um, 176. Yeah, sure. I think, I think Tonga is no. the, I think Tonga is the pick. Let's do it. How do you, do you say his name, Kyrie's? I say Kyrus. Kyrus. That probably makes sense because there's two Tonga. eyes right there. Mm -hmm. That that's probably how you say it. Kyrus Tonga. That's a good name right there. Tonga time in Kansas City. I think it'll be good for a little bit of interior defensive line depth, especially with Derek Nottie coming up on the final year of his deal. Yeah, he's a guy that can eat up gaps. He brings a little bit of pocket pushing presence as a pass okay. rusher, which. It's not like Derek Nottie plays all three downs consistently anyway. He's a guy who comes off the field in the sub package, obvious passing downs. He doesn't offer much in that regard. So um, not to say Derek Nottie isn't a valuable player, but if the Chiefs can get a guy for cheap who can do most of what Derek Nottie could do long-term, that'd be pretty helpful. So we're looking at 182 now, who the Chiefs have to pick. Um, there's not a whole lot of tackles. They're still the same tackle board. Interior offensive lineman, David Moore still there, Jack Anderson. I know we already took an interior offensive lineman, but then again, they could be a guard, right? Because we pecked a center. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't I don't think that – I like Kendrick Green. I think Kendrick Green, he's been working with uh, Duke Miniweather. Uh, mm -hmm. So is Jack Anderson. That guy's been working with Duke Miniweather. So is Robert Jones. There's some good interior guys here that you could pick from if you wanted to go there to kind of address the depth at guard. But – I mean, looking elsewhere, wide receiver, maybe Marlon Williams, Te Trevon Grimes, uh, the kid from Iowa, Amir Smith. I, I can't even Marset. see his full name. Yeah, I, c I couldn't Smith even see the Marset. full name. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamon Osborn from Texas A&M, Simi Fecco from uh, Stanford. All those guys are there. I don't know if you have any other position that you want to kind of look at. I know we picked already a cornerback. I guess we could look at safety. Uh, mm -hmm. Demar Damar Hamlin from Pitt, and James Wiggins from Cincinnati, Brady Breeze from, that's a cool name, Brady Breeze from Oregon is also there. So, anything that jumps out at you, Jordan? I think it's either Smith-Marset at wide receiver. Um, he's a guy who 
can be a really, really good return man in year one. I think the Chiefs have kind of had a revolving door there over the past couple of years. Well, really when Hardman has fumble issues or whatever, they'll kind of alternate in someone like Byron Pringle or whatever. So that's an option. Um, he is a fast guy that can make a difference, be a depth piece at wide receiver. So I like him a lot. And then Kendrick Green at Illinois. I think he is a very tough player with a mean streak and he plays on the interior of that line. So I think it's one of those two guys. Where are they ranked respectively on that board? Because I know we have a huge drop off until 259. Right. So we got another pick at uh, 259. You're right. Um, here we've got um, Smith Marset at 189, which isn't, it's, I don't think that's a reach. And no. when we go to our interior offensive line, Kendrick Green at 226. So um, I think that probably Smith Marset's probably your best option here in terms yeah. of what you can do, because there are going to be some guys, as we mentioned with like tackle, uh, you know, Landon Young, Larry Borum's going to be there. There's also interior guys that'll be there. I think Robert Jones, Tristan Hodge um, could be there at, at 259 as well. And when we look at tight end, you have Matt Bushman there as well, because he's at 249. It's going to be close. So there's a lot of guys we could go with at that round seven pick. Yeah, man. Let's go with Smith Marset here out of Iowa. Cool. That makes some local people happy. Local Chiefs fans go with the Iowa kid. So another wide receiver on the board. Do you see the Chiefs kind of doubling up at wide receiver, especially when they have so many picks? I think it's definitely possible, man, especially if you can go like second round to Monroe St. Brown. You can get your starting caliber guy. Then you can get someone who can kind of fill out the roster, um, be a special teams guy. Really with the Chiefs, like that's always been something with them for the past 10 years or so you yeah. work your way up from the special teams. Like if you're not a starting caliber player, you make a play on special teams, you get some more snaps or at least try to. That's just how it goes. So a guy like Smith Marset that brings a lot to the table, I think that's a good spot for him. Some people might give us a little bit of heat for not taking a tackle yet, but I, uh, personally, in my opinion, I really don't think the Chiefs are done in free agency, and I think uh, they're yeah. going to sign a left tackle, whether yeah. it's Trent Williams, whether it's somebody else they're not going to go into the season with two rookie tackles. I just don't think that that's mm -hmm. possible. And we've seen the Chiefs have plenty of cap space now to operate. I think that's kind of what we're operating under with this mock draft is that there's going to be a left a new left tackle in Kansas City already by the time the draft rolls around on April 29th. Yeah, I'm with you. And I don't absolutely hate the prospect of having two young, essentially rookie tackles, but I also don't like it. I think that getting a veteran now if it's Mike Remmers and Mike Remmers is your starting right tackle and you have to move Niang to left tackle I still don't like that your mentorship can only do so much and you can have Joe Tooney at left guard you still don't want a rookie left tackle and a rookie right tackle like it, it'll help right. and I think they'd be okay if that happened but ideally they'd bring someone in who can help so let's look at pick 259 here Bushman is off of the board, sadly. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's a tough one. I'm just trying to see where he went here. I must have missed him when he went when I was talking. But anyway, he's off the board. Kinder Green off the board. Cole Van Lannan off the board. Oh, uh, Zach, Zach Davidson, the Central Missouri Titan, who has drawn some interest off the board. Ogan DG off the board. Tristan Hodge off the board. Uh, had a rough little go right there. Even Sam Ellinger off the board. Uh, so <laughs> You know it's all said and done when Sam Ellinger falls off yeah. the board. So what we got here, best players available, Frank Darby, Josh Palmer, a couple guys we've taken before. Jonathan Adams Jr., wide receiver, we haven't really talked about a whole lot, but I kind of like him. Um, mm. I think that he could be an interesting round seven pick. Oh, I mean, Landon Young is still there when it comes to tackle. Larry Borum is still there. Um, I don't know what you think here. I think we kind of got to look at the offensive line. Uh, I think you're just looking for depth at this point. Landon Young and Larry yeah. Borum, the top two guys, interior offensive line-wise. I mean, they've been, uh, the interior has kind of been picked over here. So what are you thinking, Jordan? Man, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't watch a lot of Larry Borum. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know a ton about him. Um, I'm more focused on the defensive side. So if you think he could be a, a solid depth piece, then I'm 100% for kind of satisfying you, satisfying everybody, and going with that pick. I don't totally love it. I'll be honest. I think he's more of an undrafted free agent. I, I see a lot of similarities between him and you see Durant, and I think you see Durant's better. 
Um, so that's kind of my hang up on, on Larry Borum, man, the, there's just no tight ends there anymore, which is, which is kind of rough. Uh, you look at the defensive line, Lorenzo Neal from Purdue is there. He's kind of a big kid, isn't he? I can't remember his numbers off the top of my mm-hmm. head. Um, but I thought that he was pretty big, man. There's just really, really getting all. So, so now that they got all these comp picks in there, there's slim pickings <laughs> here at, yeah. at these Trey Norwood from Oklahoma. The cornerback is still there. Just trying to find names that I, that I recognize at this point. So um, I don't think that there's any way the chiefs go three wide receivers in this draft. Yeah. Um, and that's, disappointing because it seems like those are the only players that i have i'm aware of i think landon young would actually not be a terrible pick here yeah i'm fine with it let's do it yeah landon young for a nice solid round seven depth piece right there can play tackle probably play a little bit of guard too so now our draft is complete we had a pretty solid draft. I'm I'm really happy with how it shook out with Creed Humphrey mm-hmm. at 31, Amon St. Brown at 63, Rashad Weaver at 95, Pete Werner at 137, Trill Williams at 145, Kyrie's Tonga at 176, 182, Amir Smith Marset, and at 259, Landon Young. I think that's a pretty solid draft. One of our best ones. This is our first one with all these comp picks put into it. Yeah, I like it, man. We're we're kind of heating up, I think, from a draft prospect. Our past two have been pretty good. Yeah, I don't think you can argue with it. And, and I think it helps a whole lot that now we have framework of what the Chiefs are kind of looking for now with the yep. free agency, and they have actually signed players now. I think going with an edge at 95 and, and 63, uh, even if you if you trade up from 63, would probably be the way the Chiefs are going to go. If they don't, go ahead and you already pick one at 31. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that happens anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you. And man, they have options now. And yep. that's always, options are always good to have. Um, and I bet by the next time we record a podcast, we'll have something else to talk about and just kind of see what the Chiefs are doing because this, this offseason ain't slowing down, man. It is certainly is not. The funny thing is, Today is the official start of free agency, but we already have all this free agent news because the start of the illegal tampering was on Monday and it's not going to slow down either. It might slow down a little bit because we essentially know all the news that's going to happen. Uh, so Jordan, I really appreciate you joining me doing this mock draft 6.0 as you always do on these Wednesdays. I've had a really fun time doing these mock drafts with you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man.